Okay, so we put this ring on a back slice with a crown knot. Uh, the end of the rope, which generally will be much farther away than this, is just taped up. We want to do something to stop the end of this rope from fraying other than a bit of masking tape. So see, it's starting to fray on the ends and it's starting to become unraveled. So let's look at using a sailmaker splice, no tools required, or sailmaker's whipping. We'll whip the end of the rope quickly with some cotton twine and uh, show you how to get this done fast and easy with no tools. Okay, so first off, I have a ball of some natural cotton twine. Uh, ideally, I would probably use something the same as this rope. This rope's not hemp, it's hemp X, so it's a polypropylene rope that looks like hemp, feels like hemp. But uh, for this demonstration, we'll just use this cotton, cotton twine. So I'm just gonna pull off a fair amount, a bit more than I need, and I will slice off the end, and we'll start whipping. Okay, so to whip this rope, I want to lay the rope so I have two strands in front of me and one away from me. So one in the back, two in the front. All I'm going to do, decide on my distance. Generally, you want one and a half to two times the diameter of the rope. In this case, it's about a 10 mil rope, 8 to 10 mil rope. So I probably want 20 mil, so about this far. What I'm going to do is just make a simple loop with my twine and then starting at the point I want to start my whipping I'll start doing fairly tight wraps around the rope now if you start a bit farther down and you're happy to cut the ends of the rope off that's fine too no need to go more than your two and a half times whipping so there we're probably about one and a quarter one and a half times the diameter of the rope. I'll go up to pretty close to two times the diameter of the rope. And then what I want to do, keeping this loose, I want to go through around that third or back piece of the rope. So I'm splitting the rope into its three strands, one away from me, come through the middle, come back, to the front of the rope and I'm going to pass the remainder of my twine which is a bit long through that loop that we left when we started whipping the rope okay so from there I'm just going to grab the original end give it a pull this will pull everything tight we'll also pull that running out of the rope inside of our whipping Again, the tighter the better. It tightens up our whipping. And what we can do is quickly trim off the ropes that are left. Sharper your knife, the better, obviously. And we have a pretty neat whip stitch. This end here, we can trim off with a knife or a pair of scissors, or we can just leave it long. Uh, in this case, let's give it a small trim. Okay, so we've got the end of our rope. We're gonna make a bit of a mess on our bench, but let's just trim this off about half of what it was. Make it a bit neater, a bit shorter. And from there, Again, we'll fluff up the ends of our natural rope or even our synthetic rope, synthetic in this case. And this stops you from scratching any bright work that the rope may rub against. So end of the rope secure, won't unravel any farther. Fuzzy to protect our paintwork or protect our varnish. And we finished our rope, which of course ideally would not be just that length, but much longer. All right, so that's it. Sailmaker's whipping, no tools required, quick and easy, and protect the ends of your rope. Keep your rope from unraveling, and that's all there is to it.